Thank you for joining us. Please enjoy this video from Monsignor Bill. Good day. It's good to be back with you on this is part two of making a good confession. After you've examined your conscience and confessed the sins, you have to be sorry for the sins. If you're not sorry, God really can't forgive you because you, you've offended him, or I have offended him, and so I need to be sorry for that. Now, that doesn't mean we're in tears of sorrow, but it's a recognition that I have done something I should not have done. I offended God. And maybe I was harsh with my wife. <clears throat> and that's a sin. I had to be sorry for that. But be careful that you say, well, I don't feel sorry. You have to first admit, I am sorry. Even if you don't, quote, feel like it. We're into actions here a little bit, not just feelings. Feelings are, are there and they're real and we want to pay attention to them. But that's not the main thing. It's how we live and recognizing that I have offended God. And then you know, the priest will give you a penance. And that's to help you, me, to keep from doing that again. That we amend our lives. Not that we'll never do it again. Church doesn't ask of that. But I will, to amend my life, I will change something. If I'm one of those people that come home from work and just take it out on everybody in the household, I, I got to find ways to change. Not, not just keep confessing it, but to work to change it, to change uh, a, a, a bad habit and cover it with a good habit. So we have to have that sense of, of your penance. Now, if you have children and they come, it is okay to ask them, did you do your penance? And that's the only question you can ask them. You can't ask them what they said. You can't say, well, what was your penance? It's none of your business. But you say, did you do it? Okay. And you let it go at that. And um, don't tell people what your penance is. It's not really a smart thing. Sometimes I might say to a husband, well, why don't, why don't you take your wife out for a date night. Take her out to dinner. It doesn't have to be fancy. It could be McDonald's, whatever. Something along that line. And so during the dinner, say, oh, honey, I love you very much, and, and I'm doing this because it's my penance. Uh, duh. Don't do that. You do your penance, and you keep it to yourself. And the priest, I can't tell you anybody what your penance is. I can't even tell people that you went to confession. It's, it's, it's that closely guarded. And then the priest will give you absolution. There's several different prayers that can do that. And you do the act of contrition. There's some of the traditional ones. You, there's some very short ones. Be merciful on me, O Lord, I am a sinner. That can suffice as an act of contrition. That I'm saying, okay, here, I'm going to really try to do this. I'm going to try to make some changes. And then do your penance as quickly as possible. Well, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get on this a couple days from now. now. Do it right away. Most of the time, the penance is, is a prayer. But not always. Not always. One other thing that just came to my mind, if you stole something, you have to pay it back. You have to pay it back. Now, you don't have to go to somebody and say, I stole this, but maybe uh, you, know, you were uh, 
and sold something, sold something from the store. Well, next time you're there, just when you go out to, to the clerk, I, I, this was on the, on the floor in the store. And just somebody must have dropped it and just give it back like that. So if you steal five, you give five back. You might have to take some time to do that. You might have to take a little bit of time to because you, you sold something that was kind of valuable. If you were gossiping about somebody, you have to start building that person up in front of others. If you talk bad about th that person in front of these people over here, well, then you got to overhear these. You got to kind of change that. Say, well, you, you know, so and so is really. You have a good sense of humor. Really, you, could, you, you build their reputation back up. You try to restore what you took. God wants us to be holy. He knows we're going to fail. He knows we're not all we're co uh, cooked up to be. But he gives us this beautiful sacrament. Sacrament of confession. Well, Monsignor, I just... I just want to go to God myself. Well, we should all be going to God by ourselves. But he did not institute the sacrament of confession without this auricular, what we call it, confession. As Jesus said, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you do not forgive. Well, Monsignor, what kind of a sin cannot be forgiven? Well, if you're not sorry, if you're not sorry. And the last thing about a good confession is to remember that you're not telling your sins to me. You're telling your sins to the Lord Jesus. Yet he's using me and he speaks through me in the words of absolution. But you're telling those sins to Christ. The priest is the representative of Christ in the confessional. And I've seen some wonderful conversions in confessions. So maybe you haven't been to confession in 25 or 30 years. Okay, you can get there. And, and you're back. And that's what Jesus looks at. He doesn't look so much at what those 25 years you didn't go to confession. He's looking at that moment that you are going to confession. And he loves you for that. And he allows us priests to be ministers at that particular time. So confession is a great sacrament. And I encourage you all to get in the habit of about six times a year, every couple of months, find the time. Make the time, I really should say. We're all very, very busy. And bring the kids with you. Have these examinations for them. Prompt them and show them what sins are. And that Jesus forgives them. We are not our sins. We are his sons and daughters, brothers and sisters to the Lord. Yes, we do some sins, but we are not sins. We are those to be loved by God and to love him back. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.